What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a showcase video where I will be going over this Librarian Dreadnought. Now, Librarian Dreadnoughts officially only exist in the Blood Angels chapter, but my client for this commission said he wanted it painted in Ultramarine's colors, and I thought, why not? Why can't there be Librarians interred into Dreadnought sarcophaguses in other chapters. I'm sure the Blood Angels, there's no reason why they need to be the only chapter with it. So until there's actual rules for it, here's the model that I kind of interpreted. It is the, like I said, the Furioso Blood Angels Dreadnought, but built as uh, an Ultramarines Dreadnought. I, I shaved off most of the dro blood droplets, most of the wing motifs, and I added some Ultramarine bits like the Ultramarine symbol here is from the Space Marine character kit and this back banner is taken I believe from either the character kit or just the Space Marine tactical squad whichever one has a little back banner the uh, transfer that blue Ultramarine symbol against the white background in there is from the Space Marines transfer kit as well as the Ultramarine symbol here on the right shoulder pad the double-headed Imperial eagle there is from the death core of krieg kit or the uh, transfer sheet rather and i just thought it looked so appropriate this space seemed kind of bare now with any large model with lots of armor plates like this large surface areas i like to add detail and something to break up all that space so i did some freehand script right there starting with the ultramarine symbol and then a, a lot of lines of script there i did the same thing for the power fist I guess you could play it as a power fist or uh, I don't know if you want to play it as blood talons if you're since this wouldn't be a blood angels dreadnought. I'm not sure even what you would run it as but I'm I'm sure without using the actual blood angels rules you could kind of futz up what kind of dreadnought this would be. I always use counts as figures as something else in my armies especially if you've got a good kit bash and clever ideas and stuff there's no reason why I think you need to. The uh, script right there, I also added freehand script, just white paint, painted on in really thin lines, and uh, on the banner in the back as well. So the Ultramarine's paint scheme that I use is a very simple, kind of easy to follow paint scheme. In fact, it's the same one that Duncan Rhodes from Games Workshop itself, their YouTube channel, he used for his How to Paint an Ultramarine's Tactical Marine video from a, a while back. I figure, you know, go to the master himself. And uh, I tweaked it a little bit, but basically the armor is start with McCrag Blue as a base coat. I don't shade with Drakenhof Nightshade, but what I did was I went immediately to the highlighting. The highlighting is Calgar blue on the armor plates there. Just to pick up the edges and and you can really find the highlights in the claw here because I really went for each individual little joint and I think it really helps when you go to that that extra effort to to bring those highlighted points out. And then I shaded, actually glazed the armor and the highlights together to bring the colors together with Gilliman Blue. So I didn't add a shade, but when I went back over, what I did was I added a little bit of Cantor Blue into my Macrag Blue, and then I, I, sh I guess I, I really glazed those very thinly, that darker color onto the lower areas and the inner areas of all the armor plates. It gives you a very nice kind of progression of color from dark blue to that Ultramarines Blue, and then finally up to the highlighted edge highlights there. You can really tell the edge highlights because it, they look almost like a grayish, light grayish blue. And uh, like I said, you want to make those really obvious on the areas of the model that have hard edges so that the eye can really pick them up. Like here on the back of the arm, you can really tell. Uh, even on the vents, with the vents what I did was I, I put my highlight color on the upper areas on the upper part of the line and then on the sides of the vents and for each one of those it, it will add a little bit of definition and color. Yeah it's really cool because the back of the dreadnought is mostly all like silver so once you paint some lead belcher and then wash it down with known oil you're bringing it back up to just this very dark and I guess oily looking kind of finish. So the front, I think the great thing about Dreadnoughts is because the front of it is so ornate and it's there, no matter who is in this Dreadnought sarcophagus, the amount of, of craftsmanship and maintenance that goes into these giant suits, you want them to look good because they're going to be a focus piece when you put them down on the table. You want your opponent across the table to think like, wow, that looks really cool. Especially if you have a fully painted army, a model like this I think will really 
really bring that out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at the model. Let me know if you want any other tips or uh, if you have any questions on how I painted anything. The colors for it, the actual Librarian sarcophagus are the same as uh, the ones I use for the Force weapon. Basically just Stegadon scale green highlighted with Sotek and then Temple Guard blue shaded with uh, or brought together with Gilliman blue like the rest of the armor. Very happy with this little piece here and uh, I hope that the client will be as well. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you in the next video.